In this video, what I want to do is give you three tips that you can apply for long division problems. Now, these are going to be three tips that I have used myself to be more efficient with long division, as well as let my own students know, so therefore they do not get their problems with long division wrong. Because I think we can all agree, once we learn synthetic division, we like never want to go back to long division. But I don't want that to be the case. I don't want you to avoid long division just because sometimes you feel like it's hard or you don't remember how to do it because synthetic division does not work for every case. So the first thing I want you to do is always make sure you have things in descending order, which I did set up here. But one thing about descending order is notice how there is no x cubed. There's no x here. And for synthetic division, that's very, very important to have what we call place values. I think for long division, especially this little tip, if you kind of struggle with long division or you seem to kind of always make mistakes, then insert your place values just like we do for synthetic division. Okay, so now what I did is I just rewrote the problem, and a lot of times when you're doing a problem like in a textbook, like you're rewriting the problem anyways, right? So this is just a simple little step. But add in those place values, right? That's why in synthetic division we got those zeros. That's where those zeros come from. There was no x cubed, there was no x. So I inserted them myself. And again, this is not necessary. The better you get along division, the faster and more efficient you can become, and you don't really need to use these. But I always like to do this when students are first starting out because they recognize like it makes sense for them to be there. Just they're just zeros, they're just place values, but allows us to keep things organized and straight, right? So that's gonna be step number one. And a lot of times you already have your polynomials in descending order with everything, so you don't even need to go there. So let's go ahead and start the long division algorithm. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do once it's in descending order and we have our place values, is we're gonna take our first term of our divisor and divide it into our first term of our dividend. Now, I have received so many different answers of how many times does x divide into x to the fourth? Students will say like three x times, four x times, you know, just all these different, you know, x to the fourth, x squared, like it, it, uh, ten, tons of different answers. So the next tip that I want you to do is to go ahead and do your math on a separate sheet of paper or like on the side. Because the question that I asked is how many times does x divide into x to the fourth is really actually a simple um, operation. How many times does x divide into x to the fourth? But a lot of times when students see it written like this, they're like, oh, that's x cubed. Like, oh, that's really easy. You're just using the rules of exponents, right? So that's gonna be an x cubed, right? Fairly simple if you write it like this, but sometimes when we're thinking about it, we don't really know what to do. So just use a sidebar, write your work over there. Keep this for the long division algorithm, but if you have to do extra math, do it on the side. So x divides into x to the fourth, x to the third times. Now that is the first term of your quotient or your answer. And now what we're gonna simply do is multiply this x cubed times both terms of your divisor. x cubed times x is going to be an x to the fourth. x cubed times negative two, two is going to be a negative two x cubed. See, if you didn't have your place values here, sometimes it'd be confusing, like what am I subtracting this from? Because that's our next step in the long division algorithm is to subtract. And that also brings us into our third tip, which is to use parentheses. If you're gonna make a mistake on long division, nine times out of 10, that is not scientific, but a lot of times it just comes into the subtracting of the two rows, right? And because what happens is what students will do is they will subtract these two, they won't use parentheses, so they'll just subtract the x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, and then they just kind of combine these other ones vertically. So they have a zero x cubed minus, or so they just do zero x cubed minus two x cubed, and they say the answer is a negative two x cubed. And that's not it, right? We have to make sure we are, the using the parentheses, what that tells us is x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, which is just gonna be a zero x to the fourth. I don't wanna use your place values, let's just leave it off, right? Because we're looking for our answer. But in this case, zero x cubed minus a negative two x cubed, minus a negative, that's actually going to be positive. That's actually gonna give us a positive two x cubed. Now, I don't really like, I wouldn't really use this for the, for the example. I'll do this for the first example in this case. But um, again, going back to the, like the using the place values, brought, multiply these two, so what else could you put here? Well, technically, you could also include a zero x squared plus a zero x and plus a zero. Because when we're subtracting our rows here, we could technically put the parentheses over here and then just subtract everything out. But what I want you guys to understand here is you're just gonna get the exact same answer of what was on top. So a lot of times what we typically do, once you've kind of gone through this process once or twice, we just say, bring the next values down. That's why we say that, bring the next values down, because you're basically just subtracting it from place values that we included. So now we have the long division algorithm to repeat. We're gonna take our first term in our divisor and divide it into our, our next kind of expression that we have on down here. So x divides into a two x cubed. Again, just do the work over here, guys. Two x cubed 
divided by x. Well, x divides into an x cubed, x squared times, and we have the 2. So that's going to be a 2 x squared times. So we write that term up here. Now, 2x squared times x is a 2x cubed. 2x squared times negative 2 is going to be a negative 4x squared. And again, subtract your rows. I'm not going to go ahead and bring all of these down. I'm just going to bring them down, right? We know we don't need to subtract them from the place values. That's extra work. But it's really helpful when you're first learning to follow these three tips. But let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the answer. So again, that's going to be a zero. I'm going to leave that off. Now again, here's where parentheses are important. A lot of students will say, oh, that's a negative 5x squared. No, negative x squared minus a negative 4x squared. Well, that's double negative. That's like a positive. So for, therefore, that's going to give us a 3x squared. And then we have a plus 0x plus a 12. Okay, now we just go ahead and repeat the process. x divides into a 3x squared. Again, like you can do it over here if you need to. You know, 3x squared divided by x. That's going to just be a 3x. 3x times x is a 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is going to be a negative 6x. And again, we subtract our rows. That goes to 0. 0x zero minus a negative 6x. That becomes a positive 6x, right? Because you're minusing a negative. And then x divides into a positive 6x. That's going to be a positive 6 times. Um, 6 times x is going to be a 6x. 6 times negative 2 is going to be a, oh, that was supposed to be a negative 12. My bad. I wanted this to give a remainder of 0. So I'm going to fix the answer at the end. <laughs> Sorry, being a math teacher and myself. 6 times negative 2 is going to be a negative 12. OK, bring that down. Subtract our rows. And guess what? We're going to get 0 as a remainder. So therefore, this polynomial evenly divides into this whole polynomial. But hopefully, you can remember these three tips. So therefore, if you do get stuck doing long division, it might be because you didn't follow one of these tips. So hopefully, this video was helpful for you. This is going to be your answer right here. And I know you're going to enjoy the next video I have for you here. Cheers.